Today is flush with AMD news, and this time we have some news regarding Zen, as we have some very lengthy comments from Mark Papermaster, the Chief Technology Officer over at AMD. And he recently spoke in an interview uh, to elaborate on the design goals of Zen, what different what differences there are from the current CPU from AMD, and also what we can expect from Zen. And he said, quote, We just designed a brand new CPU core, Zen, from the ground up. We actually started this effort in late 2012, so we've been working on it for four years. It takes four years to get a brand new x86 high-performance CPU done. We're right on track. It's a very modern core and very efficient in terms of driving that performance per watt of energy, and it's very scalable. We also designed it to work very well with accelerators like our GPUs. You can add more CPUs if you need to get more work done, and you can connect to GPUs, FPGAs, or other accelerators. Now we have known for a while of course that scalability is one of AMD's founding ideas with Zen, meaning that we can expect to see a large number of cores for certain usage scenarios such as servers, or fewer cores operating at a lower clock speed for power sensitive tasks, for example say with a ultra thin laptop. At a basic and simple level, four Zen processor cores, each of them capable of handling two thread thanks to the simultaneous multi-threading technology, are quote unquote strapped together into a single CPU complex along with a bunch of level three cache. So Papermaster is highlighting how easily they can simply add additional CCXs to the design and throw that in with a bunch of GCN cores to create powerful APU solutions. And he continued, quote, Design is microarchitecture, attacking every element of the execution units of the cache subsystem of the scheduling, every aspect to ensure you are moving bottlenecks. We've leveraged the new 14nm FinFET technology. The scalability you have with FinFETs is really quite a large range because it has very little leakage. When you turn off your clocks, when you're not doing active work, you can get very close to nil energy, and leakage is lower than previous technologies. Yet, as you turn on your clocks and accelerate your workloads, you can get very fast performance per watt. He didn't stop there, however. He also discussed the processor's bandwidth and caching systems, and he said, Quote, you have to look at the demand internally of all your execution units. You have to look at the amount of bandwidth that you need and how you optimise bandwidth and latency. How big is your pipe feeding those engines? How fast can you move in, data in and out of those engines? That was the core principle behind the Zen CPU design. You need enough bandwidth and pipes to optimise your latency to ensure you don't create bottlenecks. We looked at what we could do to speed up both ensuring no bot bottlenecks in terms of the execution flow. We've improved the micro op cache the efficiency of getting those instructions into the pipe. We've also made a number of efficiencies in terms of reducing the number of cycles, executing through our execution units, in terms of memory and feeding it, we've optimised our cache subsystem. And of course, for Zen, AMD have opted to add 512k of level 2 cache per core, which is private and a shared level 3 cache system which is shared between the cores. So basically, core 1 could peek into the, le into the level 3 data of core 2 to save long trips around the memory system. Couple this with a generous number of entries for both integer and floating points. In theory, the process should be able to keep a steady flow of data from the main system RAM, which of course is DDR4, to the various caches and of course the processor's execution cores. And as you also know, Zen also has double the bandwidth compared to Excavator on level 1 and level 2 caches and up to 5 times the amount of bandwidth for level 3. And AMD have been very keen to tout the 40% IPC gains with Zen and Papermaster again focused on this in this particular interview in which he said quote when Zen comes out in early 2017 it's going to be it's going to have rather a 40% improvement the only way you can get that is to use a combination of every aspect of the design of feeding the engine of optimizing the engine itself and improving the throughput to the engine there are the three key elements in terms of how you get improvements. Anyone who's been around microprocessors design for a while will say it is not rocket science. They're right, but those are the levers. It's about breaking it down into dozens and dozens of specific changes you, you drive into a design. Now, of course, the performance of Zen, you know, the exact 
performance is still debatable, you know, such as clock speeds and pricing and that sort of thing. But, you know, assume that AMD can nail good clocks and yields with 14nm FinFET process and also get it at a good price, it actually could be a real contender for anyone looking to move away from Intel. So, that's it for this particular video. Thank you very much for watching. Do remember to like and subscribe if you haven't done so already, and I'll see you next time.